So, Yuresh, thank you so much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. Mm. But before we walk into the future, can you please tell us a little bit about your background? Where did you grow sure. up? Okay. Uh, yeah, so thanks. Thanks, Nick. Um, let me start off. So I grew up in, a, uh, in KZN, uh, in, in, a, in a town just, just north of, of Westville, um, which is, I would say, maybe 15 minutes from sort of central, central Devon. So that's where I grew up. I actually um, studied there um, through schooling as well as through uh, university. And uh, uh, post that sort of left Durban, I would say, uh, once I finished off my articleship, uh, when I completed university. And Yuresh, can you tell us what was your dream career when you grew up? <laughs> Uh, well, I think that changed and it evolves, you know, as you as you sort of progress through uh, secondary education. I think um, I always had a, a flavor for um, for maths and science. I enjoyed those, you know, as, as subjects of curriculum in a secondary school. So I was torn between the numbers going a finance route versus uh, biology and sciences, you know, from an engineering point of view, and. Uh, well, what, what won the, the debate was numbers. And so I followed a, a career in commerce and finance and, um, you know, qualified as a chartered accountant you know, using that career stream. And tell us who inspired you or what inspired you in your early days? Uh, just, well, I think for one is uh, my dad. Um, yeah. If I sort of bring it closer to home. Um, as if we grew up in humble backgrounds, um, he was an educationist for most of his life, for 42 years. And I think his inspiration was the power of learning uh, and the power of a curious mind. Um, and I think that was instilled in myself and my siblings at a very young age. So he's, he's one who clearly uh, gave me the thirst for knowledge, if that makes sense. And, and obviously you do... Uh, and you can achieve with that knowledge that you acquire as an individual in in any in way. So, I think that's that's for one. Uh, so he's he, he was clearly one that I looked up to and and definitely inspired me. I think most so um, some of our you know in, uh, entrepreneur uh, leaders or sort of global masterminds that I'm sort of referencing back sort of thirty or thirty five years where you know Bill Gates. Was, was one of those at the time, you know, we had um, Branson and the things he was trying to do if we get our mind back. So, you know, entrepreneurial leaders and, and thought leaders um, was also, you know, those who gave me a zestful life around trying to, or creating an ambition. And Yuresh, looking back over your career, would you say there was a turning point or maybe a number of turning points where things could have gone different? Um. I think there was, um, I wouldn't really call them turning points. I think there were always trade-offs or opportunities for, for career acceleration. Um, and, you know, just my career is actually, I, I was only with two organizations my entire working career. Uh, and uh, the one was with uh, the consulting firm Deloitte. Uh, and that's when I started at a young age, you know, sort of growing up into oh, articleship as a chartered accountant. Um, I had the opportunity, uh, because they're a global firm, uh, to work in Europe as well as in the US. And maybe that's my first turning point. As a very young uh, individual starting their career, I had the choice of remaining in the US because I was offered a position or returning back to South Africa. Right. Uh, I took the opportunity to return. Um, and if I reflect on that, that decision always had trade-offs. Uh, but I think my career acceleration and opportunity that I had in country in South Africa was was at a much faster pace than what I would have achieved, you know, in in the US, and and so you know I would say that would be sort of one one area of of reflection, um, and then the second was as I continued with Deloitte and I got to seniority quite quite early, I was the equity partner in their financial services practice for about ten years, and there again was another turning point, do I continue in a career of you know, being a consultant um, in, a, in a large global firm or actually going across into corporate. And so again, in 2015, that's when I, I left 
uh, Deloitte to join corporate for the first time, uh, which was the Liberty listed group at the time. Um, so I would say, again, that's the second sort of turning point or decision that I made. Equally, one that I, if I reflect on, I've learned over the last nine years in corporate, it's very, very different uh, from, from sitting as a, as a consultant and providing advice. And, uh, you know, extending on that is to say, once I joined Liberty, uh, the opportunity presented to be the group financial director in, in two years later, and I was successful in that. And that in itself was an extremely good learning curve for the four years that I did that. Uh, and equally, another opportunity presented where I was able to, and had the opportunity to lead the organization in its unlisted state. And that's what I'm doing today. So I think right. all of these, as opposed to trade-offs, I think it's just being at the right place, right time, delivering on things that you can, can deliver on. And equally, uh, you know, working with a team and equally with mentors or senior execs in any organization, be it your board or executive teams, that recognize your talent right? and, and allow you and afford you the opportunity. And that's how it sort of I would categorize, you know, my career journey so far. And you, Resh, um, what is driving you today? Um, oh, um, I'll start by saying I'm highly competitive. Uh, and so I think my competitive streak is I always love to win. Um, and, uh, and so where I find myself in the, in, the, in the accountability or responsibility that I have now, extending that into the Standard Bank Group, uh, because that's where I reside, is the unit that I've been given the accountability for. It's a fourth business unit of Standard Bank Group. And how do we actually unlock the value that non, this non-banking unit can actually achieve for the customer base of the group? Um, and so to uh, have the opportunity to actually uh, give the rightful contribution of this unit to the broader benefit of the Standard Bank Group. You know, so that's a big drive that for where I find myself here now. And I should just call out, you know, I sort of run two portfolios. I'm still the chief executive of the Liberty Group. Equally, I'm the chief executive of what we reference as the fourth non-banking business unit of Standard Bank called insurance and asset management. And so it's within that anchor to say, I understand the capabilities that we've got. We've got a differentiated proposition. How can we unlock that for the group uh, and provide value to its shareholders and to its customers? Thank you. Now, looking into the future, Yuresh, what does the future of leadership mean to you? Um, I think if you, to me, it's, it's, I think it all determines on, um, I think we all can resonate with the, with the word leadership. So let's start there. Um, and, and I think in its simplest form, everyone can relate to it. I think the future of that is built on it. And I, I want to reference it, uh, to individuality. And what I mean by that is it depends what individuals need at a point in time to determine or to aspire or to look up to. And so, you know, to define it as, as sort of, you know, one phrase is actually very difficult to do. I think the way I would like to think of the future of leadership, it has to be one that evolves in current circumstance. It has to be one that is relevant um, to the teams or colleagues that you're leading at point in time. And then it sort of has to talk to, within that context, what level of leadership style that needs to be exhibited to unlock the, the potential of those individuals or teams. And so it's within that category to say that I don't think we could fix a, a leadership trait or style or the archetype, if you want to call it, um, you know, to define it, uh, for uh, an indefinite period of time. And as we see new trends emerging, um, you know, we, it should be adaptable and flexible um, for for that sort of leadership state to actually support um, and, and unlock the best potential for individuals. Thank you. And Yuresh, can you tell us, looking back over your own leadership journey, what have you learned? What do you consider most important for building future leaders? In other words, what do we have to do more to build future leaders, to encourage future leaders and to empower mm -hmm. future leaders? I think the first is to instill confidence in individuals. Um, a lot of individuals in my, my sort of tenure of, of leadership roles 
people don't understand the potential that they actually have that they can unlock for themselves and for their teams and for their businesses or community at large. And, and I'll sort of narrow it down further to say, how do you build confidence in individuals? But there's a trait there between confidence and arrogance. How do you build confidence in individuals to unlock their potential that others can see, but you cannot um, see it for yourself as the individual? So how you help them guide, guide, guide on, that, on that basis? I think that's one that's quite critical. The second is, is allowing uh, teams to deal with conventional versus un unconventional tasks. Because we're very quick to stereotype certain cohorts into doing things that they should be familiar with. Uh, something that's worked well for me is where you push the boundaries and introduce unconventional tasks to teams which wouldn't really encounter that. And that again, it, it seems daunting, but it helps build the confidence team. So that's the way uh, sort of, you know, sort of my, my thoughts around that. Thank you. Now, Yuresh, these are challenging times as the world is stumbling from one crisis into the next. What is mm -hmm. your advice for future leaders in terms of challenges? What are some of the biggest challenges they should expect to encounter and uh, overcome in their career? Well, I think for one is in every challenge, I'll start with every challenge, there's an opportunity. So the bigger the challenge, the bigger the opportunity. Right. So it's, you know, go with that, you know, with the, with the optimism as opposed to being pessimistic. Um, so look for the opportunities in your challenges, but learn from your challenges to accelerate your opportunities. Um, so that would be sort of, uh, you know, the advice that I would, I'd like to give to, to sort of fu to future leaders. Um, and within these, within challenges, um, you could, I think what we should be cognizant of that challenges, uh, could be relevant to different people, the magnitude of the challenge for different individuals. It could be the smallest challenge that an individual would perceive for themselves in isolation versus solving something for either the society or the economy and, and, and sort of even globally. And so measuring yourself to say the impact that you can have in understanding a challenge relevant to a certain court or the magnitude of it is also relevant as well because you could get so bogged down by challenges that emanate globally, let alone for our country or for just your organization or for your society, that you may even you know, fail to have the energy to start thinking you know, through what's the opportunity within that and how you can overcome that. So maybe that's sort of some, some thoughts on that. Right. And Yuresh, if you were to design a curriculum for future leaders, what are some, some of the new skills you would want to factor in? <laughs> um, I would say, I'll start with the softest issue. We don't pay enough attention to listening skills. Opportunities lock, uh, uh, sort of opportunities present themselves very softly. And so, and what I mean by that is uh, we often race to solutions without actually really understanding what the ask is or the task is or what the challenge could be. Um, and so, Future leaders should take the time to really appreciate the power of listening um, and, and don't be too quick to offer solutions. Maybe that's the first. The second would be is it's, it relates to the unconventional or what's the disruption that's, that's coming for us. But these become generational and, you know, sort of decade to decade where we find ourselves now, you know, artificial intelligence is the hottest topic that, that we are embracing. The question that comes there, or for us, is to say, um, how do you embrace these uh, new horizons uh, that come through? And it comes back to the adaptability and having the open-mindedness to accept them. Because if you don't, you're actually going to, um, you, you, you'll struggle uh, to keep up um, with current trends, with um, uh, the opportunities in the world that presents for itself. So, Yuresh, as a mentor to future leaders, can you maybe share a success story or two where you mentored an upcoming leader and that person took your advice to heart? Mm. Um, I'd say the one is, and my uh, the sort of, I'll, I'll bring it to an individual who's worked with me currently, 
when I, and I'll sort of just relate a personal story, and hopefully we'll keep it anonymous, you know, if sure. it depends where we go to. But I, the, I, when I came into Liberty, um, and I was heading up the finance function, as I said, then I became the group financial director. I actually saw, um, and, and it was a talented individual who was an actuarial uh, uh, skilled or background, but he was sort of deep into the business more around the very technical uh, side of of uh, bringing the numbers together. I was, I'm simplifying it quite quickly. However, but I saw the attributes of big picture thinking, solving for the unconventional, um, coming through with, um, you know, thinking beyond sort of the narrow defined scope of work that the individual was doing. And so I actually pulled him out of the function got him more involved into uh, a more senior finance role over the over the last sort of maybe three years that uh, while I was there within that function. And he's currently my CFO. So he's promoted up the ranks and now he's my you know, chief financial officer for Liberty as well as for IAM. So that's one way I saw talent and he's, and he's doing exceptionally well, you know, in the last sort of year and a half in the role now as CFO. Hopefully that gives you a sense of that's one that comes to mind. Thank you. And looking back over your own leadership journey, Yuresh, are there any role models of leadership that you encountered and maybe worked with that you would recommend future leaders should study? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, one is, I mean, practically on the ground, but that's individuality for me, is um, I had the opportunity to work with Jacko Marie, uh, you know, who was the ex-CEO of, of Standard Bank. He was the chairman of the Liberty Board for several years when I joined the board. And so, you know, I had the opportunity and privilege of working side by side with Jacko for about five, six years. Astute business individual, you know, well respected in the finance community. And and uh, so I've got a lot of, you know, lessons of leadership and thinking um, and running large organizations, you know, I, I take on to him. So that's one individual. Uh, the second is uh, Sim, who, who heads up um, Standard Bank Group uh, currently. He was also on the Liberty Board when I joined. And again, I had a, a good sort of, I had a mentoring relationship with him, uh, sort of not official, but unofficial one. And one now that he's my direct manager or line manager, if you think so, because he found, uh, I mean, he supported my appointment as the Chief Executive Officer of Liberty and being on his leadership team because I support some now in his group leadership council of Standard Bank Group. So I'll say those, you know, those two um, are those that are closer to home and sort of practically uh, available to me. If I look at sort of, you know, global icons out there, uh, uh, I've looked at for, for passive thinking and wider spirit. I looked at the Dalai Lama uh, in terms of his thinking and I, I've sort of read quite a bit around how he approached and his approach to life and zest for life. Um, and I would say, you know, one which is controversial, uh, but I've, I've, I, so I enjoy uh, biographies. Um, and so Elon, um, Elon Musk's journey has been one uh, Pretoria boy to where he is now. Um, uh, also one that's, you know, if I'll just call two international ones, is one that they, they're very diverse in, yeah. in the two characters of personas. But there's lots actually to be learned uh, from either of them. Uh, what, and obviously you make what you want to take out of those, you know, for yourself. Absolutely. Now, Yuresh, how can our listeners connect with you and where should they follow you? Uh, so I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, and so, you know, I've got a LinkedIn profile uh, due to my responsibility that I, that I hold. So, you know, can, that's the first connection point, I would think, um, through LinkedIn. I do a fair amount of engagement through LinkedIn as well, uh, where people do reach out. And so I think that would be the easiest. And last but not least, Yuresh, what is your advice for the millions of learners out there who are looking to finish school, start a career? What are maybe, maybe one or two success factors they should keep in mind? Um, don't ever give up. Uh, so, you know, build the stamina. And remember, you fail 10 times before you have the first success. So it takes a lot of stamina and resilience to, to get there. Uh, it's back to my point around what was instilled in me around curiosity. And be a curious mind is one that will always be activated and alert to 
uh, to be able to accomplish, you know, anything or any goals that they set for themselves. Equally, you know, set small milestones of what you want to achieve. Everyone races to the end, you know, five or eight years ahead and where they want to be uh, for as young learners. Start with six months burst. And if you can achieve those, you build the momentum and then you actually start accelerating faster than even you believe that you can achieve. Um, and then the final is because that's where I've still got my heart set on is maths and science is, um, I would say, the avenue that opens up many, many doors for, ne- for many years and generations to come. So um, uh, explore that. Don't feel that it's, it's not relevant, particularly young learners of today. You know, maths and science to me is the foundation of everything that you can build on be it artificial intelligence, data modeling, and all the, uh, even the engineering faculties, it is the cornerstone. So even though it may not be the most popular, force yourself to understand it a bit more. Well, Yuresh, thank you so much for making time to share your insights and your wisdom into the future of leadership and uh, leading the way by example.